Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Weekly Coder. This week we're gonna basically continue uh, with our 2048 tutorial. We're gonna start off from where we left off last week, and that was um, basically just doing the animations, right? So let's kind of get a recap going of last week. Last week we did this. We uh, created an animation that would pop the tiles in and as I see it we have uh, <laughs> we I, I left it so that it would um, come in slow and steady so that you guys could actually see that it was you know performing the animation so uh, first things first let's go ahead and close that or um, stop it and go into the scripts folder and let's open up our game and let's fix the speed first. All right, so this new tile pop-in class here, or sorry, the uh, this new tile pop-in method that we have here, that's what's being called, and we are setting a um, time scale right here. That's the variable that we're uh, using. That's what we're using to set the time that it takes for this animation to happen. So we need to find out where we're calling new tile pop-in, and I'm gonna bet that it's going to be somewhere in the method that generates a new tile. And yep, there we go. All right, so now here we have 1F. So we're gonna change that to 10. And let's save that. Let's go pop over to Unity real quick. Press play. And these start should start popping in real fast now. All right, so yeah. Just like in the game that we're all used to seeing, these are popping in really nice and fast, really smooth animations. Game plays really well. And the only issue we have now, the only thing we have really left to deal with as far as the animations go is having the tiles slide from left to right, of course, and then, you know, up and down, uh, obviously. So let's stop playing this super very addictive game and let's um, <laughs> let's write some code okay so let's open up the game class what we're gonna need to do is we are gonna have to make a couple of changes and um, still relying on my previous work that I've done to reference so we're just gonna start from the beginning here and just double check that we're still doing everything that we need to be doing we are allowing the user to press and that's that's fine that's good that's exactly what's supposed to happen um, we don't need to, we don't care about play again, we don't care about the player input, we don't care about checking if it's in a valid position or if it's in the grid, we don't care about checking game over, nothing changes there. Um, check and combine tiles, alright, so, this is gonna change. Uh, check and combine tiles. Because right now, we're doing all of the, uh, combining and, and whatnot, we're doing it all in this method. So what we're gonna do is we're going to not do it in this method. Um, so we're gonna have to modify how this method is called. Because right now we're passing in the uh, moving tile. But what we're also going to need is we're going to need a vector2 that is the phantom tile position along with a vector2 that gives us the previous position of the tile. All right. So then uh, we keep this, the position vector for the moving tile transform dot uh, local position. And then we also create our colliding tile. So we create a transform and we create a colliding tile. And we are going to set that equal to grid the integer value of uh, phantom tile position dot x and the integer value of phantom tile position dot y. So that gets our transform at that current index. Okay. 
So instead of basically using the position dot x and dot y of our moving tile, we are using the phantom tile position that we're used that we're that we've created um, to store. Yeah, we haven't created that yet. <laughs> I'm a little bit ahead of myself because, like I said before, and I don't know if I've mentioned this, I may or may not have, but I've done this video before, and it turned out being like two hours long, and I was just completely not happy with it, so I'm redoing it. Um, anyways, uh, so phantom tile position, that's something that we're going to get into in a, in a few minutes. But for now, just kind of follow along with me in this code and uh, just kind of write what I'm writing, just kind of copy me for now, and we'll go through the explanation in a second. All right, so we can get rid of this one. Oops. We can, uh, we're gonna keep the tile value and the colliding tile value. We're gonna keep both of those. Uh, moving tile value equals colliding tile value and not moving tile dot get component tile dot merge this turn and not colliding tile dot get component tile dot merge this turn and I'm gonna add another uh, condition here colliding tile dot get component tile dot will merge with colliding tile. Remember we added that to our tile class in the previous uh, tutorial that we did. So we are just gonna get rid of everything that's in here except for return true. Oh, and uh, update score. Because we wanna keep our score updated. So we'll keep that there. And um, we're gonna go ahead and let the moving tile, right, needs to know that it needs to be destroyed. And that's a property that we created in the previous tutorial. So then we're gonna do moving tile dot get component tile dot colliding tile. Ooh, forgot the dot dot colliding tile equals colliding tile. Moving tile dot get component tile dot move to position equals phantom tile position. And then we are going to update the grid. So grid int previous position dot x int previous position dot y equals null grid int phantom tile position dot x int phantom tile position dot y equals moving tile. And finally, moving tile dot get component tile dot will merge with colliding tile equals true. Okay, so a little bit of explaining. All right, um, so phantom tile position the way that we're keeping track of the movements of the tiles, because remember when we talked um, in the uh, in the previous tutorial about how everything is kind of moving in one frame, so the tile moves from this position to that position to that position, all in one frame. So what we're doing is we're storing that we're going to be storing those movements in a variable called phantom tile position, and what's going to happen is when those are, are when those values get stored, the movements, right? We're actually not going to make these movements happen. We're going to pretend that they happen by move, are, are by basically storing those movements in the phantom tile position vector. So that phantom tile position vector will just kind of represent a virtual tile, one that doesn't exist, one that we can't see. It's just a position. It's just a. It's it's a. That's all it is. It's just an x y coordinate that we store as the phantom tile position. All right, so just keep that in mind when I explain the rest of this. So what we're doing then is we're getting the colliding tile, right? In our check and combine tiles, we are checking to see which tile, um, so remember, we have a situation here. We've got a two and a two, and the two is moving, right? Imagine that this is the phantom tile position. So the two stays over here, 
the phantom tile position is updated. Okay, it goes here, then it goes here, then it goes here. All right, so the phantom tile position then is what we need for the X and Y values when we get the colliding tile out of the grid. So we're passing in the X and Y of the phantom tile position vector to get at the index in our multidimensional array that's holding that transform for our, for our colliding tile. So then, because the tile is here, right? That's the tile it's colliding with. So then we store that tile or that transform in the colliding tile variable. And then we get the colliding tile value the same way we did before. We use colliding tile, like get component, the tile class, and then we get the tile value that was assigned to that tile. The moving tile value, nothing changed there. That's the just the value of the moving tile. That's gonna that's gonna be the same no matter if we don't move the tile. Like if it stays here, if it, if it, and and we only do the phantom tile position and the tile still over here, the value is still gonna be the same. So we we still get the value from that tile. The reason that we added this is to keep uh, accidents from happening. <laughs> to basically keep it. Uh, we're setting this to true when it's about to merge with a tile so that it can't merge with another tile. The uh, destroy me property, we're going to set that to true because in our animation, okay, we need to know that this tile needs to be destroyed when do those two tiles uh, collide. And, and you'll see uh, more of that when we actually get to creating that method. Um, we are setting the colliding tile property on our moving tile value so that when the animation method moves the tile, it knows it has a reference to that colliding tile and we don't have to check for it again. We don't have to find it again. Um, we have our uh, move to position, okay? Because when we get ready to animate the movements of the tiles, we're gonna do all of the tiles at once and they're all gonna move. So every single tile needs to know where it needs to go. So if there is a phantom tile position that isn't the same as the one that we already have at our current position, then we're going to move to that position using this new coordinate. We then take our grid, right? And we go in and we set our previous position, the index of that previous position to null. And we set our, we set our phantom tile position to be equal of that of the moving tile. Even though the, move, the tile hasn't moved yet, in the um, array, we're setting it so that that tile is going to now be at that spot, okay? Finally, what we do is we say, we'll merge with colliding tile to true because that's what we're checking for here. So this doesn't happen again. Once this is set to true, this method won't get called again. And finally, we're updating the score and we turn true. Again, if none of this is true, we're just gonna return false. All right, so you guys are still with me so far? Okay, so, what we have now is we need to modify our, no, before we modify our move tile method, let's go ahead and actually create our new method. And that one's gonna be responsible for sliding the tiles, the actual method that's gonna use the lerping function, okay? So we're just gonna go down to the very bottom. I'm gonna create a new I enumerator method and we are going to call this one simply slide tile all right and we're going to pass in the game object and we're just going to call that tile and then a float of time scale and that of course is going to be the amount of time it's going to take for the tiles to slide from one place to another Again, the first thing we do here is we set the number of coroutines running to increment by one. And at the end, we're going to do number of coroutines running decrement by one. And we're going to go ahead and set up our variable to keep track of our progress. And we're going to, we're going to set that one to zero. And then we're going to create our while loop. This should all be pretty familiar to you because we're pretty much just doing the same thing that we did in the other method. Um, so in our while loop, we're just gonna say tile.transform.local position, okay? Because this time we're actually changing where the tile is. A vector two dot lerp. We're gonna pass in tile.getComponent, the tile class, 
the component of that. All right, so we're gonna get the starting position. That's where these positions come in, right? So we got tile.get component, uh, tile, oops, tile dot move to position, and finally progress. So um, this is how the starting and the move to position get used. Um, that's how, that's for the alert function. So that's why we need to set those. And then we just basically increment progress um, times uh, time dot delta time uh, times our time scale, and we return null so that we don't lock things up. And then we do the same thing that we did before. We do tile dot transform dot local position equals tile dot get component. Uh, tile dot move to position because that is actually going to be the final position for that tile and we just want to make sure that that's exactly where it's going to be all right so if uh, in this method because this is where we're actually sliding the tiles so at this point as the tiles are sliding and because all of the calculations have already happened and our tiles, all right, so understand one thing. When we get to calling this method, the slide tile method, that means that we finished going over the entire grid to see which tiles are going to move where. Okay, We're, we've already calculated all the phantom like positions. Okay, we've already done that. We've already assigned uh, colliding tiles to all the tiles. We've assigned move to positions, starting positions, and everything else to all the tiles. So once we get to here, all these tiles are going to slide. So in this method, we have to check if these tiles, some of these tiles are supposed to collide and merge, right? So we say if tile.getComponent tile dot destroy me because if the tile is to be destroyed, that means it's merging, okay? Then we say int moving tile value equals tile.getComponent tile.tile value. So we are getting the value, right, of the moving tile, the tile that's actually sliding at the moment. And then we are basically just gonna say if Tile, Ugh, this these updates. Why, like, why now? Do it when I'm not like actively doing something. If tile dot get component tile dot colliding tile doesn't equal null, and that's because we're just doing like a sanity check to make sure that that tile is actually assigned. Uh, there shouldn't be a case um, if there is a destroy me then it should have a colliding tile. But we have to do this so that we don't actually uh, crash the game if something didn't get set right. So we do destroy immediate tile.getComponent tile colliding tile dot game object. All right, because at this point, the tile, this one, has already slid where it needs to go. So right now, we want to immediately destroy the colliding tile so that it is out of the space and it is no longer there, <laughs> okay? We don't want that lingering around. In the same token, we want to destroy the actual tile, the moving tile, okay? Because we're gonna create a new tile and that's where this comes in. So we do string new tile name equals tile underscore plus moving tile value times two. And this is nothing new. This is the same code. I literally could have copied and pasted this code when I deleted it from the check and combine tiles method. But you know what? Why not rewrite it? <laughs> um, we are going to increment our score uh, by the same value. So moving tile value times two. And then we're going to do a game object 
new tile equals uh, cast game object to instantiate resources dot load and we're going to pass in new tile name and type of game object Ugh. and then we are going to pass in tile dot transform dot local position and quaternion dot identity and that's that line <laughs> let's keep going um, we're going to do new tile dot transform dot parent equals transform and new tile dot get component tile dot merged this turn equals true and then we're going to set the grid int new tile dot transform dot local position dot x and then again int new tile dot transform dot local position dot y I got a quiz for you guys too see if you remember why is it that we're using uh, that we're casting an integer to the indexes answer is in three two one because <laughs> vectors like local position x and y values are stored in floats arrays only take integers as arguments so if we were to pass a floating point number in to these values then we would get an error that's why we cast an integer new tile dot transform dot local scale equals new vector to uh, zero zero new tile dot transform dot local position equals new vector two um, new tile dot transform dot local position dot x plus 0 0.5 f new tile dot transform dot local position dot y plus 0 0.5 f and finally we yield return or starting a coroutine And we're going to use new tile pop, new tile pop in because that is what pops in our new tiles. New tile, new vector two. Oops, zero zero. Uh, new vector two, one one. And ten f for the speed. And new tile dot transform dot local position and new vector two new tile dot transform dot local position dot x minus zero point five f and new tile dot transform dot local position <laughs> dot y minus 0.5f. I really, really hope I typed that all incorrectly. So that will essentially do what we needed to do, right? And I'm going to cover this, all of this in a minute. Um, what we need to do first is we need to actually call this method. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll up and up and up all the way to here right no right here all right so we need to make a minor modification but before we do that Let's go ahead and 
create our loop. Okay, so we're gonna do a for loop, int y equals zero, y is less than grid height, and plus plus y. For int x equals zero, x is less than grid width, uh, plus plus x. And then we're gonna do transform t equals grid x, y, And vector two move to position equals t dot get component um, tile dot move to position and vector two starting position equals transform dot get component tile dot starting position and then we start coroutine slide tile, pass in our grid x, y, and dot game object, and our speed, and that's that. Okay, so the reason this works, what the hell did I do here? Oh, I call it. All right, so the way this works is we we press a button, move all tiles is called, right, with our direction that we pressed. So let's say we pressed left, then it would go into this method or it would go into this if statement. It would say, oh yeah, you pressed left, okay, cool. So now we have to run this for loop, okay? So for an X grid width, so we're gonna go over all the X positions but for every x position we're going to go over all the y positions first so and if it's not null then we're going to call uh, the move tile method and tiles move count is incremented so the move tile method is called and then the move tile method basically is going to it's not doing it yet but it's going to record phantom tile positions and do a whole bunch of other stuff that we're going to get into in a second but this is going to be called until it's gone through and iterated over the entire loop. And then it's going to say, did you press right? No, because we press left. Did you press down? No, because we press left. Did you press up? No, because we press left. Okay, finally, we're down here. If tiles moved count doesn't equal zero, then we generate a new tile. Okay, well, we don't want to do that just yet. But we're going to change that in a minute. Um, once we get to down here, because we've already done all of our calculations, we iterate over the grid again, okay? And we get all of the x, y values of the grid. And, oh, uh, important thing, important thing, important thing. If grid x, y doesn't equal null, of course. Because if it equals null, then we're going to get errors here when we're trying to set the transform. So we can only set transforms of uh, indexes in the grid if it's actually not null. So when we store the transform, then we get the transform uh, move to position and starting position values. We pass in. Why do we get those values? We don't need those values. We sure don't. And why is this this way? This we we literally can just say uh, t dot and 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 this is what I'm telling you is is <laughs> I wrote this code um, kind of I put it together kind of unoptimized when I created this at first um, because the animation was never really part of the tutorial to begin with. So I kind of wrote that quickly, and um, you know I, I kind of just did it on the fly, and then I wanted to add the videos as soon as possible. So yeah, I'm I'm going through and debugging as I am writing this. So that's what you're catching here. So anyways, this is going to call the slide tile coroutine, which is going to slide the tile, and it's going to do all of the tiles, okay? Because this all happens in one frame. So this gets called if there's ten tiles that need to move. 
when you press the button, then this is going to execute, start this coroutine 10 times, and then the next frame is when you start seeing the tiles slide, and the next frame, and the next frame, and the next frame, over all these frames, the tiles are sliding. This is only called this one time during that one move, okay? One time per tile is what this is called. And then they all run in parallel. Um, so what we need to do now is we need to actually update our, um, before we do that, let's see here, generate new tile this turn. We are, we need to update the grid here. And then we need to, doesn't equal zero, then we're not gonna call generate new tile. We are going to set generated new tile this turn equal to false. <clears throat> and um, that's going to show up, let's see, where did I put that? New tile this turn. If not, all right, so that's in the update method. So let's scroll up and find that real quick. Let's get rid of this actually. Oh, okay, so we already wrote this in the previous tutorial. Um, you guys might've been confused because we haven't used it yet, but we're gonna use it now. This is initially true when we first start the game. So this would have never been called had it not been set to false somewhere. So now that we're setting it to false, a new tile is going to be generated because in our update loop, this is going to get called all the time. So if this is ever false, this is going to run, it's going to set it back to true and it's going to generate a new tile. That simple. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to actually go to our move tile method and basically modify it so that it doesn't move the tiles, but only um, changes the phantom tile position. So what we're going to start out with here is we're going to keep this, but we are going to create our phantom tile position vector. And I'm going to set that equal to tile.localPosition. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to actually get or set our starting position of our tile. So this is where our tiles are going to start. So tile.get component tile dot starting position equals start position. So this is where we set that property value of our tile. Okay, so this is Basically, this is our starting position. That's where our tile is before we move it, and then we set the, the starting position, okay? Now remember, this move tile method isn't going to be called every time we wanna to try to move the tile. This method is going to be called for each tile. So in that for loop, we're, we're pressing left, and it's gonna find this one tile, and it's going to move that tile that many times until it can't move it anymore. And that's what happens in this while loop. So instead of saying tile.transform.localPosition plus equals vector three dot direction, we are going to say, we're gonna delete this just like that. And we're gonna say phantom tile position plus equals direction. And then um, we're going to set our previous position, vector two, previous position. And we're gonna set that equal to phantom tile position minus direction. I'm gonna get rid of this, because we don't need it. Oops. And then here, check is inside grid. We have, we have to pass in the phantom tile position instead of the actual position that we were gonna get from the uh, um, from the tile itself because the tile is not moving any longer. So then uh, same thing here, we're gonna pass in the phantom tile position. Um, if check is at valid position, we are actually not going to update the grid. Uh, but if it is at a valid tile position, then we're gonna say tile.getComponent tile 
dot move to position because now we can set our move to position equal to our fan and tile position. Otherwise, okay, we have to check to see, check and combine tiles, and that's when we add, we actually, um, you know what we also need to do here is we need to set, we need to update our grid um, with those, with that information. So our previous position dot x int previous position dot y equals null. So we're setting the position that the um, that there was previously a tile, we're gonna set that to null. And then we're going to say phantom tile position dot x int phantom tile position dot y equals tile. Okay. And then otherwise we're gonna do check and combine tiles. We're gonna pass in the tile and then we're gonna pass in the phantom tile position and the previous tile position. And then in here, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna say phantom tile position plus tile position plus equals minus direction. And we are going to, uh, nope. We're gonna say tile dot get component um, tile Dot move to position equals phantom tile position. All right, because we moved back, right? Because we, we're not combining, so we're moving back one, and then we're setting that to our position. And then uh, if phantom tile position equals uh, start position, and we don't need a vector three casting here because we're using vector twos now across the board. Um, then we return false, otherwise we return true. Otherwise down here, um, we're gonna say same thing. Phantom tile position plus equals minus direction. Remember because um, we hit a wall. I think that's what this is for, check. Yeah, because we're, not, we're no longer inside the grid, so we have to move back a space. And then we also have to set our move to position. So tile dot get component dot tile dot move to position equals phantom tile position. And then if phantom tile position equals the starting position, we return false. Otherwise we return true and we can save it. Now, I think that I am pretty sure, in fact, that we are at a place where we can actually test this now. So, I don't think we have any errors or any warnings, so let's just save it, go to Unity, and let's press play and see what happens. Okay, our tiles are still popping in like they should. Let's press the down button. Oh, look at that, we slid. And we're sliding, and we're not combining. Oh, this is not good. We're not combining. Why are we not combining tiles? All right, so let's have a look here. This, all right, so these two twos should have combined. Let's have a look and see which one's which. All right, so that's a two. All right, so this two should be the moving tile. That two should be the colliding tile. So it doesn't have a colliding tile set, which is fine. It also doesn't have, all right, so it's got a starting position and the move to position. Okay, so you see how that starting position started at Y1 and then the move to position is Y0. So it did its job, it slid where, we, where it was supposed to. And then we've got this other two. Now this one was at Y2, but its move to position was set to one because his, it's the destroy me and colliding tile are not set either. So, something's not right. 
So let's have another look in here. In our um, uh, we're looking for the the move tile method. All right. So we do check inside grid. So if it's in the grid, which we know it's here, if it's at a valid position, okay, we do this. So we set the move to position to the phantom tile position if it's at a valid position. If check and combine tiles, tile phantom, let's see here. Phantom tile position, previous position, phantom tile position, minus check and combine tiles. So I guess the obvious thing to do here would be to start by um, adding a debug. So let's do this, debug.add um, check and combine tiles. And uh, for the value, I'm just gonna do the um, moving tile dot Um, moving tile dot name, and for the label, I'm going to I'm just going to call it checking combined tiles, and I'm also going to add in the um, moving tile dot local position string as a parameter for the label so that we don't group those. So let's go ahead and play and see what happens. See if check and combine tiles is, I mean, see if it's even getting called. So we go down, and we go left. So check and combine tiles is called once by tile two, <laughs> which doesn't really tell me anything but I'm guessing that it's this tile that called it. So it called it. So that's that's a good start. So it's actually calling it because in here, it's not at a valid position. So it has to call this. So does it return false or does it return true? All right, so transform colliding tile. It's getting the colliding tile using the phantom position X and Y, and then it's setting the moving tile value, the colliding tile value. Um, it's gonna do debug dot add uh, check and combine tiles. Um, inside if and we'll just call this check and combine so this will just tell us if it gets to this if statement which I'm guessing it probably does not yeah so we're not getting to the if statement And we're not getting to the if statement because that's check and combine tiles. Ah because we want this to be knotted. So no, not colliding tile. Ugh, can't believe I forgot that, that was so dumb. All right, so let's press play. And let's test this out again. 
and it's still not working. Ridiculous. <laughs> Wait, we didn't save it. Save. Why? Okay, here we go. It's gonna work this time. Down, left, and we merged. Ha! Okay, look at that. Beautiful, right? Look at how beautiful that is. It works. Animations are nice and smooth. It's perfect. It's like working exactly how I want it to work. So, yeah, I mean, that's basically that. Um, the next tutorial, and only because I am tired and it's been a long day and I kind of just want to relax and watch some TV or something, but. Um, the next tutorial is going to be pretty short, um, but it's going to just deal with sound and how to add sound for when the tiles are moving and when they're colliding and, you know, that kind of thing. So while it'll be short, it'll be extremely informative as most of the tutorials are. And, um, I hope you guys will enjoy that as well. So what else can I talk about? to make the video longer so that I can play for a little while longer and try to get the 2048 tile. Not really sure. <laughs> I am just like uh, procrastinating here. Plus it's hot and I'm sure I've said this before but my garage is, is basically where I'm sitting and I'm doing these videos and being in Florida, being in a garage, uh, I have to turn off the little portable AC unit that I have that kind of you know keeps everything um, somewhat cool. And uh, beca because if, if I don't turn it off, it'll be super loud and you guys will hear it in the video and um, it'll just sound like crap. So I turn off that AC and during the time I turn it off, it gets hot. I mean, all right, so I don't know if you can see that. Uh, 84 degrees Fahrenheit is what it is right now. That's hot. My computer's not happy. Um, and when my computers aren't happy, I'm not happy. <laughs> Except for when I'm playing games, uh, which I just, I love. Um, so I do that and I think that kind of helps. Now I'm just rambling on about nothing. I'll probably just like fast forward through all this gameplay and uh, save the footage as a stupid blooper that you'll one day see because, you know, what the fuck. Okay, so we finally got to where I wanted to get to, to show you guys that we can win the game. So I'm going to press down, and there's the 2048 tile. Woohoo! Alright, anyways, um, see, it would have been a good idea to actually add in a little check that happens uh, to check to see if we won, because, you know, now we just get to continue playing the game. So here's what we got to do um, in our next tutorial. Maybe, you know what, I'll add that in with the next tutorial because our next tutorial is going to be kind of short because it's going to be all about sound. So in the next tutorial, what I'll do is I'll add in a uh, thing that, um, a thing, <laughs> a condition that will tell you if you won the game or not. So yeah, so there you have it. Um, animations are all done. And uh, next week, we're going to look forward to adding in that uh, condition that's going to allow us to 
uh, see whether we won or not. It'll pop up a little message. So we'll add something else to the HUD. So yeah, it'll be a longer video. Yay. <laughs> I thought it was going to be like five minutes, but no, it's going to be at least 10. So um, that's the end of that. And uh, if you like the video, thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Check out my uh, Facebook. I'm actually starting to engage more on that page uh, as far as uh, answering questions um, and, and you know anything else you guys want to talk about. Feel free to uh, hit me up on there. Twitter. Um, all of my links are down below, so you can uh, you know follow me on on all the social media stuff. Uh, Facebook, Twitter. Also check out my blog. So at uh, weeklycoder.com, um, my Patreon page. Uh, if you want to be a supporter, uh, feel free to donate uh, as much as you like. Um, anything else, uh, just stay tuned, and I will see you guys next week.